Let's pray and then we'll jump into it. We'll uh, see where we go with this. Father, we're so thankful. So thankful for this day. So thankful for you. We thank you. As we already have. Thank you for revelation knowledge. We believe and we expect for insight into mysteries. Spirit of God, we are yielded to you. Our desire and it's words from heaven for this generation. That will speak as the very oracles of God. We believe that our hearts are connected to you. That our tongues are connected to our spirit. And our spirit is connected to your mouth. And we thank you for utterance, divine utterance. Even those things that we may not have prepared. That will come forth so clearly and so well. And we believe and we expect for that. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 How many are believing for that as well? Praise God. And so um, we're just going to flow together this morning a little bit. We might do some praying, but just some things that the Lord laid on my heart and dropped in my heart. And, um, and uh, my wife is here, not just to look pretty, but she'll jump in every now and then. So uh, it's not she's cutting me off. It's just when she gets something, she does it and all those different things. So this is more of a laid back session type of thing. And uh, we've both been pushing each other. No, you do it. No, you do it. No, you do it. <laughs> I said, I've been talking all the time. I don't have to say anything. And, um, and so we'll just go with this. Uh, as we were thinking, as we were talking to see, that's the thing about standing. I was about to walk off myself. As, um, yeah, bring the stools if you can, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I was about to be a hypocrite. Like, <laughs> woman, you stay here. <laughs> stay by my side. <laughs> St stand by your man. No. Um, Thank you so much. This is, those are both our daughters. This is our daughter by birth, and that's our daughter-in-law, Jasmine. Thank you so much, and y'all jumped up so fast to do that. Uh, but as we've been t talking about these things, you know, again, this whole thing about mantles and, and, oh, yes. and uh, mandates, impartations. And um, there are some things that I believe that God is wanting us to access. Not just he's wanting us to, but he's needing us to for, for this generation. And uh, should the Lord tarry for generations to come. And uh, again, this is not just something for the fivefold ministry gifts, but I believe that this is for every single believer. I really believe, I truly believe that there's this, this wave, if I could call it that, that's going to happen. A lot of it is going to take place uh, amongst the body and those that are lay people, so to speak. In other words, those that don't walk in the office of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher. But there's so much that God is wanting to do in the body. And for too long, there's, there's, there's just been so much of this. Well, you do it. You go up here. You you get it done. And I remember uh, even as I, um, years ago, as I started to get into some of these different things and uh, working with the Lord, I remember uh, I was an assistant pastor at my dad's church in St. Thomas, and um, and so we had a uh, a prayer meeting type thing, and 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 at some point in the prayer meeting, they asked for us to get into groups, and uh, hey, what are some things that some people are believing for? And and one person asked for it, it was healing in a certain area, and so a, a guy um, said he he was the one actually leading the group, and he said he said oh he said that's Pastor Kenneth's area, he's specially anointed in that area, and I said well thank you for that. I said, but I don't minister from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. I said, now how about we both get down and we both take our anointed hands and lay hands on him. And, and so we did that. But what I found was that so much was just being put towards the, those that are quote unquote specially anointed. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that we're all specially anointed. And I, I understand, I know what that means. I'm not knocking anything. I, I know that there's a healing uh, anointing that some can flow in. But really, I believe that a lot of that just deals with consciousness. Yeah, yeah. A consciousness of what you possess, a consciousness of who you are, mm -hmm. a consciousness of what you walk in. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And so, um, you know, Sister Annie was talking the other day about um, Joshua and the Israelites and, and all those different things. And as they were getting ready to go in to possess the land and be strong of, and, and, and very courageous and put to, and listen, anybody that doesn't listen, we'll put them to death. And I love that. <laughs> And I believe that there are certain mentalities and certain <laughs> thinking, certain <laughs> philosophies, if I could say that, that needs to be put to death. Yes. Needs to be put to death. Absolutely put to death. Yes. Not just knocked down, not Come just on. knocked out, but absolutely put to death. Yes. And so I want to start here in Joshua 18, so that way we don't say that I didn't open the Bible. Joshua chapter 18, in verse 1, 
It says, now the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled together at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle of meeting there. Mm -hmm. And the land was subdued before them. But look at verse 2 here. So important. Verse 2, it says, but there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes. How many tribes? Seven tribes which had not yet received their inheritance. This is approximately seven years after they've already entered in. And you got to love a leader like Joshua. Because in verse 3 it says, Then Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long will you neglect to go in and possess the land which the Lord your God, the, the, the Lord God of your fathers has given you. In other words, it's already done. Yeah. And that's just been resounding so much as we start here and we, uh, this will be our jumping off point, so to speak. How long will, you, don't just think physical things, don't just think finances. I believe that there's some, some giftings, if I could say that, some, yes. some places that God is wanting us to right. really tap into. And the question is, how long will you neglect, neglect, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. neglect? How long will you neglect to go and possess? Yeah. In other words, it legally belonged to them. Yeah. It rightfully belonged to them, but they did not possess. Yeah. In other words, there are things that can belong to you. There's an inheritance that belongs to you, but if you, take, if you don't take possession of it, it does you no good. Yeah. And so I believe that there's some things that, that God is really just asking us to, uh, what was that, you know, come up higher. Step up yeah. so we can step out. And, and how long, like what is our excuse? What is, our, what is it that we're waiting on? How, and I understand God's timing. I'm not talking about getting out ahead of God mm -hmm. in, in some of these things. But I mean that really there's some times that God is not really um, holding it back. Right. But he's more waiting on us to just... Step out in these things. When go you ahead. said there the we go. word, I wasn't sure how long it was going to take before you step in. <laughs> when you said the word neglect, it was. Uh, I'm just thinking about what that means to neglect something. That means you're not giving attention to it. Mm -hmm. That means uh, sometimes we can neglect and not realize we're neglecting certain things. Like uh, you know, maybe God spoke some things to our heart. And, um, and maybe he even has shown us things that he wants to use us in. And uh, our timing is never the same as God's. Have you ever noticed that? Like our timing, we never think now is the time. It's always like tomorrow or in the future. Yes, Lord, I see that. Yes, in the future. And there are times where he shows us the future, but there are times where he reveals things to us. And he wants us to know, like he wants it now. And, um, and But the only way we're going to know that is if we come up higher and yeah. if we actually seek him to know yes. his timing because it never lines up. It was making me think about um, our son, our last son, um, Cole, when he was younger. Um, <laughs> there's a lady in the church that uh, she loved our kids. She loves our kids. And she was telling Cole, Cole, I want you to come and spend the night with me so we can cuddle. He likes to cuddle and she likes to cuddle. We can cuddle together. And she's like, don't you want to come over? And at that time, he didn't like to go anywhere else. He liked to be at home. And so he would always say tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow. And that would be his reason. Like every time. And it was, it was so funny. It was such a joke. It's always tomorrow, you know, but I feel like sometimes, you know, the Lord is speaking to our hearts and yeah. he's saying now, but we're saying tomorrow, Lord, I can see me doing that in the future, yeah. you know, maybe in a few years from now or whatever. But I do believe that we won't know, um, until we seek him and we, we come closer and he begins to reveal, but reveal these things to us. But, um, if we're neglecting the times, if we're neglecting the things that he has shown us. Some people, I do believe, I sense this, um, all week I've been sensing this, like some people are afraid to pick up mm. what maybe you had tried to do. Somebody said it earlier this week, you tried to do with the arm of the flesh and you, because you failed or because this happened or that happened, you're afraid to go back. You're even afraid to press in because you have a feeling God's going to bring it up to you again. Okay. But what you don't realize is that there are new, I woke up this morning saying that there are new graces there are new graces and the new faces that somebody else mentioned. I don't remember what, who it was, Pastor Joel. 
new graces, new faces, new places. But the faces, I believe, are the, the different individuals that God has uh, to, and it's it, because the season is different, because the grace is available, yeah. and because the, the new faces are for those new individuals that he has appointed to be with you and to do whatever it is, you know, that he's been stirring in your heart to do. And some of it is even just stepping up yeah. in your church, like yeah. doing things that I, I just see the Lord using it as a, a major uh, catapult or yes. stepping stone to, to, and not that we use it for that, you understand what I'm saying, but just using it as training ground, as something that will prepare you, will absolutely equip and prepare you in the way that he needs you to be yeah. um, for this time. And, and, and it's so important. And, and with that, it's, it's okay, let me say this, it's okay to, to work with him. Yeah. In other words, what I mean by that is there, as you go, you're, you're still learning. We're still <laughs> growing with things. Uh, I can remember, um, and I like to go back in the past a little bit because sometimes when we just teach from where we are, um, people miss certain things and they think that this is where you are. But I remember being a, teen, a teenager, uh, working with some stuff. Well, I was a little older. I was about 20. And, um, and I remember I was in prayer and I was talking to the Lord and I was just like, Lord, I, wa I want to know when that healing anointing is present and, uh, and, and all these different things. I'm just praying, you know, because I'm, I'm studying some th things and I'm letting go of things that I thought I knew and, and, and just really wanted to work with this thing. And, and I'm like, I want to know. Because, you know, you hear Dad Hagen talk about, you know, the fire that would get in his hand and, and all these different things. And I remember uh, even hearing Brother Jim talk about, like, ooh, it's there, you know, and all this different stuff. And I'm like, well, I remember a story you told about, like, where you laid hands on a chair and just put it in there and had somebody sit on it. And they're just, what's, what's happening? You know, just at will. And I'm like, I would love that. I want to I wanna experience that. And I'm like, Lord, how will I know? When will I know? And, and then I said, I said, Lord, I said, I know. I know it's in there whether I feel it or not. I said, but I would like to feel it. And I heard him say this so clearly. He said, you know, son, he said, whether you feel it or not, it's there. Yeah. He said, but I will say this. He said, and he said this to me, and for years I wasn't able to talk about it. He said, but the more aware you are, mm -hmm. the more conscious you are that it's there, the more you'll experience it. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was around the time where, and y'all got to excuse me, don't take this as doctrine, but this was around the time where uh, Matrix had come out and, and all these different things. Like a f maybe Matrix was out a few years. And, and <laughs> he said it to me in this way that I would picture it. He said, uh, he showed me almost like, you know, that matrix, like where all the numbers and the ones and zeros and, and all that. <laughs> and he said, you know, it, it's almost like you visualize it. Uh, just, just, it was like, it was going from here to my hand mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and just building up. And then, and, and then, you know, go ahead and release that. And, and, and some stuff I can't get into everything right now, <laughs> but, uh, and I'm not telling you to take this and, and use it as doctrine. <laughs> this is what he shared with me before somebody's like, what in the world are you talking about? <laughs> But you know what? I went ahead and practiced with this. <laughs> I remember, again, I was, I was, um, I just moved back to St. Thomas to help my dad in the ministry. And so he was leading the service, again, another prayer service. And, uh, and so I was standing in the, in the front of the, um, in the front row and we were just praying and, and he was leading in prayer. And the lady that would come and bring, you know, the cup of water, uh, the cup bearer, um, <laughs> <laughs> she went and she, she put the cup up there and she, um, as she was walking, I grabbed her and I held her. And I don't know if she was thinking that I was holding her because, like, you're being a distraction right now. But I was, I, I just sensed that there was something going on in the body. And I was just thinking to myself, let me just work with this a little bit. Mm -hmm. Practice. We don't always tell people that we're practicing. <laughs> <laughs> but, do yeah, experiment. And doctors, you know, it, the doctor's office, is a, it's called a medical practice. <laughs> you think they know everything. They're practicing on you. So why don't we just practice some stuff? Why don't you just practice on some people? Hey. I practiced on my dog when I was 16 years old. <laughs> I did. Dog came home with a limp. I got some anointing oil. I was just fresh with some of these things, and I was just hungry. I was like, I'm going to anoint my dog's leg, and I did. <laughs> I did. Again, I'm not giving you doctrine. I was 16, and I laid hands on, it, on, on her leg, and, and honestly, as, after I did, limp automatically stopped, and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, like this is every creature, right? But anyways, <laughs> not giving you doctrine. We'll come back to this. But, uh, but anyways, I grabbed that lady, and, um, and I held her, and I started to work with this thing. I said, all right, Lord. Yeah. Without even opening my mouth, I said, all right, Lord, I'm going I'm to work with this thing. And so I start to do that. I start to visualize. We have an imagination for a reason. Yeah. 
What was said? It's not for, the imagination is not for the fake. It's f- it's for, for the, the it's to, to see, see it's unseen, to see unseen things. things. That's so good. And so I started to use my imagination. I started to visualize that life, the life of God, just moving to my hands. I don't know why. It's all in me, but I don't. It's yeah. moving to my hands. And so I did that, and I held the shoulder like this, and I was like, oh, I feel it. <laughs> and it's like building up, and then I was like. I mean, go ahead. I mean, it's, it hit me. I was like, well, go ahead and release it, dummy. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and release it. And so I just went ahead and started to visualize and felt it leave my hand and started going through her body like this, just at like a cone, mm-hmm. you know. And then my dad stopped praying, so I didn't want it to be a distraction. And so, um, so I just said to her, I said, hey, what's going on in your body? She said, well, you know, uh, the other day the doctors, I, I, um, it was a negative report uh, uh, that came in, and, and there were these different um, – uh, she said it felt like pins and needles all through her body type thing. And, and I said, I said, okay. I said, because right now, I said, well, right now in my head, she said, I know. She said, I feel, I feel it. Mm-hmm. She, said it uh, she said, I felt this energy leave your hands and starts to go through my body. And I didn't act surprised. I put on the best spiritual face that I can. I said, I said well, amen. I said, that's the life of God. <laughs> I said, I didn't finish releasing it. I said, but if you let me, I said, I'll go ahead and release it. She said, well, go ahead. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I did, mm-hmm. went in her and she came back. And, I mean, completely healed, completely yes. well. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this thing works. Yes. But notice that it began with a consciousness. Yeah. A consciousness Deeply and awareness. Aware. And the thing mm-hmm. is, is, this was always available. But how long will you neglect yes. to go and possess this and possess. thing? Walk in it. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Um, in Mark chapter 6, we can see the um, instance in Scripture where, um, where Jesus and the disciples, they feed over 5,000 people, right? So Jesus is preaching. They come to him, and, uh, and, and Jesus is teaching, doing all this different stuff. And the disciples come to him and said, uh, Lord, you got to send these people away or else they're going to pass out. And then the news station is going to come, and they're going to say that you, you, know, you, 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 you were preaching too long, and, and people died of heat stroke and, and all these different things. And so Jesus said to them something that's so powerful. He said, you give them something to eat. Yeah. You give them, let's turn there. Let's go Mark, Mark 6, Mark chapter 6. Yeah. Y'all doing all right? Mark chapter 6. And so um, in verse, uh, let's see, 37. Thank you so much. But he answered and said to them, well, they said, send, send them away. Verse 36, send them away that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Mm-hmm. But he answered and said to them, to who? Them. To them. You give them something to eat. In other words, I don't think Jesus was just saying this real loosely right. and teasing them and, and asking them and de- commanding them to do something that they did not have the ability to do. Yeah. They've been following him. Yeah. They've been with him closely. They've seen some things. They've, they've seen him operate in a certain way. And he says, you give them something to eat. Yeah. And I believe this was an opportunity for them to do something supernatural. But right away... They did kind of like what a lot of us do, and we go back and slip into the natural realm. And so they said, shall we go out and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give them something to eat? Now, it showed that they had it. But then it says, well, he asked me, he said, how many loaves do you have? Where am I at? Um, How many loaves do you have? Verse 38, go and see. So in other words, he says, take inventory of what you already possess. A lot of times we're looking and waiting until we possess something more. But he's just like, I can work with what you have. Go and take inventory of what it is. Has there been impartations? Has there been things? Has there been hands laid on you? Paul told Timothy, don't forget. Don't neglect the gift of God. Stir up the gift of God that's on the inside of you. Hands were laid upon you. There's been some impartations. There's There's been some deposits. Some of you have followed some people and there's been some things. Listen, if you're part of Kingdom Life, we're not just up here preaching and teaching just to sound good. Yeah. There's been some impartations that's placed yeah. on the inside of you. And my wife and I, we cannot do this thing by ourselves. Yeah. You don't have to bring someone to us for us to pray for them. Yeah. We are not threatened by your success. Yes. Take inventory of what you have. Go and see. So they said, well, uh, it's almost like they said, well, all we have is five loaves and two fish. What can we do with that? Then he commanded them to make them sit down in companies. And so there's order and all these different things. And uh, I'm going to skip uh, to chapter 8. 
chapter 8. And then so now again, so of course we know this story. Uh, in, in chapter 6, they all got fed. They were leftover baskets of, of fragments, right? Chapter 8, um, verse 4, uh, the disciples said, how can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? Verse 5, so he asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said seven. So, um, again, they did not, they lacked this kingdom dominion mentality. I believe Jesus was working with them and trying to get them to understand this. And he's just wanted them to cooperate with him. Or let me say this way. He's just wanted them to cooperate with heaven. Is this making sense? Am I making sense? And so, verse 6, he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven uh, loaves and gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples. So in chapter 6, he gave them to the disciples. The disciples were the one doing the work. The disciples were the one seeing this thing multiplying in their hands. They're doing the work. Yes, yes. They're doing the work. Yes. They're doing the work. And it wasn't even a challenge. I mean, I picture it, you know, I know the chosen had one way of how they saw it, but I, I kind of did see it a different way. But, but they're working with this thing, and it wasn't like they're praying yeah. to get to a place like, oh, gosh, I, I, I hope this thing works. But they're, they're going to the different groups, and it's just, it's not running out. Yeah. It's multiplying, it's not running out. And they pick up all this excess, all this abundance of leftovers. Yeah. And so now he gave it to them. And they set them before the multitude, and they also had a few fish. And having blessed them, he said to set them also before them. So they ate and were filled, and they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000, and he sent them away. Immediately got into the boat with the, regions, uh, with the disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. Verse 11, let's look at this. This is where we want to pick this up a little bit. Then the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, testing him. But he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why does this generation seek a sign? Mm. Kind of remind me of Zacharias. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like what was, how like he I was, how, how will I know? <laughs> how will I know? In other words, what's the sign? No, no, no. Yeah. What did he say? Yeah, yeah. And so he said, why does this generation seek a sign? Surely I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And he left them, getting into the boat again, departed to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. They did not get the clue. They reasoned among themselves. They reasoned. I wonder how many times have you and I reasoned among ourselves. They reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. But Jesus, I love this, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason be, because you have no bread? Yeah. <laughs> are, are you kidding me? I know, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. That's how a lot of people see it, right? But, I mean, I, I, I would kind of be like that too. Like, are you, are you serious right now? You're actually reasoning because you have no bread. Because you have no bread. You got a loaf of bread, but because you're reasoning and you're thinking, oh, he's upset, he's mad, uh, and, and you can see them like, I can't believe you forgot to bring bread. Oh, no, that wasn't my responsibility. It was, it was Peter's turn. No, it wasn't my turn. It was, it was John's turn. No, 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 don't put that on me. I'm the one that he loved, right, and all these different things. But he's like, are you serious? And then he asks this question, do you not yet perceive? Yeah. Nor understand, and this is it, is your heart still hardened? Is it possible that we could be followers of Jesus and still have our hearts be hardened in certain areas? There's some things that he's been teaching us and working with us on, but yet we still have some hardened hearts in some areas. He says, having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear, yeah. and do you not remember, verse 19, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of fragments did, what, you take up? Take up? Yeah. And they said, well, 12. And also when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of fragments did you take up? Yeah. And they said, seven. So he said to them, how is it that you do not understand? Mm -hmm. How is it that you do not understand? And as I've been studying some things, I've been seeing just this place of where 
the Lord is just really wanting us to get to a place of God consciousness. Yes. And if I could say it this way, love consciousness because yes. God is love. Yes. A lot of times we, we lack this understanding of the love that God has for us. Galatians 5, 6 says this, that in Christ Jesus, indeed, the circumcision, no uncircumcision avails anything but faith which worketh by love. I love how the Amplified says it. It says faith which is energized and activated yes. by love. Yes. Yes. Faith which is, Brother Jim was talking the other day about those particles. Yep. And faith, this being this energy. Oh, faith which is energized and activated. Yes. Faith which is energized and activated by love. And a lot of people just hear, oh, I'm, I'm walking in love. Yes, that's important. Of course, Jesus talked about that. But the love that God is, the love that God has for you, yes. that when you have an, a consciousness and a knowing of this love, I mean, if the disciples had this knowing of this love and this consciousness that, man, as long as Jesus is with me, we don't lack for anything. Yeah. We don't lack for any kind of ability. We yeah. can do this thing. We, yeah. he's, they, they were unsaved. They didn't have the life of God on the inside of them. They didn't have God himself living on the inside of them. But he gave them something that they can work with. Yes. And he expected them to work with this thing. Yeah. I'm sorry. You can jump in at any time. Uh, and, and, and so how, how is it that you don't understand how is it that you don't quite get the love that God has for you? The, yeah. How is it that you, don't, you aren't yet conscious of God. I mean, you go to Matthew 6. We're not going to turn there, but, um, but Jesus was teaching the disciples all these different things. And he said, hey, listen, uh, when you're fasting, brush your teeth. You know, everybody don't have to know that, that you're fasting. You know, put a smile on your face. You know what I mean? Uh, your, your, your Father in heaven rewards you. Right? Even when you're giving, you don't have to announce to everybody what you're doing and all these different things. Like your father who sees in secret, he'll reward you openly. And even you, don't pray like the heathen do, that they think that they'll be heard. They just want to pray in the, in the corners and, uh, and all, all around and, and, and think that they'll be heard for their much speaking. But you, when you pray, your father in heaven, he knows what you have need of when you pray. Yes. It is, it's not by your much speaking. It's not by your many words. It's not by you having everything crafted so perfectly. And Father, how art thou? And, and all these different things. But you can, you can be yourself. He made yeah. you the way that you are. But the consciousness of the fact that there is a God that lives on the inside of you. Yeah. And you're not far. He's not God just off in heaven. But right now you're seated in heavenly places right. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And again, he's just wanting to work with you. On some things, but how is it that you don't yet understand? How is it that you don't perceive? How is it, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Is your heart still hardened in these different things? And so there's this consciousness. And uh, even if you, ha. Ah. Matthew 6, Matthew 6. Let's go there real quick. Matthew 6. Thank you, Lord. You're thinking your assignment is just to pray, huh? <laughs> Matthew 6. Matthew 6, a few years ago, Brother Jim was here, and he, he, he talked about this, and this just stuck out for me. But um, verse 25, it says, therefore I say to you, this is after he, uh, I feel like this whole time, he was just really teaching and working on the disciples on this consciousness of God. Even to the point where they asked him, how do we pray? And he says, all right, I'm going to show you how we pray. Our Father who art in heaven. Yeah, yeah. Like, in other words, he's not just my Father. Yeah. He's your Father. Your father knows what you have needed before you pray. Your father. He's yours. You have this relationship with him. But if we can get to this place of fellowship, of this consciousness, I wonder how much more we can accomplish for the kingdom. You guys doing all right? And so, verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. And this is what Brother Jim had pointed out. He says, look at the birds of the air. And I love how Jesus uses something so simple. He says, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your, huh? Yet your heavenly father feeds them. And then he asks the question, are you not of more value than they? It takes something so simple. And after you said that, Brother Jim, a few years ago, I, I, I was sitting out on a porch and I'm hearing these birds singing. Mm -hmm. I was like, Could you, would you just look at this? <laughs> They're chirping and singing and all these different things. I'm like, they have not a worry in the world. <laughs> and my father feeds yes. them. Yeah. They don't get to do what we do. They don't get to sow. They don't get to reap. We, get, we have that opportunity. We have that honor of sowing yeah. and, and harvesting. Yeah. And yet my father feeds them. And I'm way more valuable than some bird. Peter, if you're listening, I am more valuable than any animal. <laughs> 
out there. And my father feeds them. And it just took me on this journey of just consciousness, just a little bit deeper consciousness yes. of God. Yes. That, that if I get into worry, ah, money is trying to take the place that only God is supposed to hold in my life. In my heart, yep. mm -hmm. hmm. And so this consciousness, yes. this consciousness, this consciousness. Let's go to James chapter 1. Praise the Lord. You still believing with us? I know this is simple. You probably heard this already and all these different things. But I really believe that there's some unction on this and that if, if you'll learn to tap into this, there's, I believe that there's more that God has available for us that he wants us to walk in. Yeah. And he's not waiting. I mean, we're not waiting on him as much as he's waiting on us. In James chapter 1, uh, uh, in, instead of reading the New King James, if you can put it up in the Passion for me, please. Verse 22. Verse 22. Hallelujah. It says this. It says, don't just listen to the word of truth and not what? Respond, respond to it. There's a response that's necessary. Yes. Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it, for that is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees. So you see something. Yes. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. You go out and you forget your divine origin. You forget your divine origin. There's some things, us as ministers, that if we don't continue to work and challenge and push the envelope a little bit, we tend to forget yeah. our divine origin. In other words, we step away from things. And what happens is a lot of times we just start to talk about just things of the past. Mm -hmm. yeah. We become those museum keepers, so to speak. Yeah. We just dust off the memories of the past. And, oh, remember this, remember that. And, I, again, I'm so thankful for those that have gone before us. Oh, yeah. So thankful. Oh, so much to learn. So much we did learn. But my God, there's so much more. There's so much more. It, it yes. did not end with them. Yes. Again, like I said the other night, Dad Hagen said, like, um, no, if, if you guys don't do more than I did, I mean, you, you, you don't have to pay as much of a price as I did. You're, you're starting off at a better level. Yes. So we should be able to take this thing further. And there's a generation that's waiting on us to accomplish these things. So if you, you might perceive, you might have seen some things, but if you're not, if you're not a doer, if there's no action, you go out and you forget your divine origin. Yeah, let's read the next verse. So those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by. I'm sorry. Uh, did I? Is that the right verse? Yeah. Um, no, it's not. Verse 25. Yes, it is. I was right. And I was wrong. And I was right. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfecting law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. And if someone believes, verse 26, they have a relationship with God but fails to guard his words, then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty. Hmm. Fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear. Listen, again, we're so thankful for the written word, but there's some rhema words. There's some, there's some, there's some things that we can hear. There's some things, again... Uh, Greater places to go, yes. greater things to say. Yes. Greater places to go, greater things to say. There's some greater places to go. There's some rooms. There's some, there's this place to go in the spirit. Yes. And you'll hear. Paul talked about how I heard words that I couldn't even utter. Yes. Yeah. So it's not saying that you'll, you'll say everything from that place. But when you get to that place, and it's not hard to get there. Yes. It's easy because we are spirit. Yes. That when you get to that place, it's easy because you live with a consciousness yes. of where you are. Yes. Yes. 
of how we operate from. Can I say this? My wife and I purposely live in such a way where we're down to earth. Where it might even seem sometimes, well, I could, I could say at least for me, it may even seem sometimes that I'm carnal. I live this way because I want to show that you can be you and yet still live in the spirit. Isn't it wonderful that Jesus chose a whole bunch of guys that had all kinds of issues and worked with them and they changed the whole world? Didn't have anything perfected that, that I, I remember I had to learn because, again, I'm, uh, when I was younger, I'm listening to a lot of Brother Hagin stuff and, and I'm seeing him and I'm, oh, that's so wonderful. And I just, thank God I refused to do the whole twiddle my thumb thing because I heard about, you know, people used to make fun about, oh, everybody trying to twiddle their thumb like Brother Hagin would do. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that. But I started doing like this little movement, <laughs> standing and holding my hands together. But I listened to him so much that I started to sound like him. And, and the Lord was like, I just want to use you. I want to use your personality. Yeah. Because I used to feel bad, like, well, I'm so goofy and, and, and all these different things. Nobody's going to take me serious. And he's like, no, 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 I like that. <laughs> and I can use it because it breaks them down and then, boom, you can do that. Yes. So I remember going to lay hands on one guy and he had um, some growth in his chest or whatever. And I was getting ready to lay hands on him and, and I just saw myself punching him. And no, I don't have a punching ministry, but yeah, some because you're like pastor. Hold up now, uh, but I saw myself. You know, Jesus said, "I only do the things I see my father do. I always say the things I hear my father say." But I saw myself punching him, and so I was, I, I was tempted to just lay hands on him. But I, I was about to, and I stepped back and I smiled. I said, uh, "I said, is it all right with you if I punch you?" He said, "Huh?" <laughs> I said, "Is it okay with you if I punch you?" He was like, uh, "I guess so." I went, "Bam!" Now I was a little nervous. I was because he went out. I wasn't sure if it was another power, if it was just that punch. <laughs> but I said, pick him up. Again, good spiritual face. I could, I could do that real well. I said, pick him up. I said, tell me what's going on. He said, it's gone. I said, awesome. I said, you ready for... <laughs> I was like, I'm just kidding. But again, this consciousness, this, yeah. this living this way, this, yeah, 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 yeah. you don't have to feel it. So many times, and some of the greatest things that I've seen came even when I didn't feel anything, touch somebody's hip, nerve stuff. And I'm hearing stuff and I'm just obeying and I'm doing that and I'm walking that out. But again, um, fascinated by, responding, responding, fascinated by and responding. It's not enough to just be fascinated by it. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that's so good. Man. The things that we heard this week, so good. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah, good. Yeah. And we're just fascinated by it. But what about the response? Yes. The response yes. to it. The yes. response yes. to yes. it. Yes. The response. Responding to the truth that you hear. Those are the ones that are strengthened by it. And they experience all that they do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. One last verse and then we'll pray. I know. I, I feel that. One last verse and then we'll pray. Let's go to 1 John 3. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, are you fascinated by the word? Yes. Are you going to respond though? Because yes. if you don't, you're just walking in self-deception. Yes. You anointed, self-deceived person, you. <laughs> if we don't respond, yes. if we don't respond, if we don't respond, yes. 1 John 3. Hallelujah. Again, James, now Galatians 5, 6, faith activated and energized yes. by love, yes. by the love that God has for you. That he actually loves you so much that he wants to work with you. And it doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you've made, how many times you've failed, how many. Listen, just do it. Just do it. You have enough time that even if you mess up, he's a restorer. Yeah. You know what I mean? You step out on some things and, well, that didn't work. Well, here's the thing. Pressure's off of me because it ain't my power anyways. <laughs> right? I mean, I want to help God look good, but he doesn't need me to help him look good. And so, so what if that, I shouldn't say so what because it does bother me. If that person didn't quite get it, it's frustrating. But you know what? I didn't put that sickness on you. God didn't either. Yeah, yeah. Are you with me? So why don't we just work with this thing? Yeah. And so in uh, 1 John chapter 3, um, 
verse 19, uh, pull it up in the Passion. I, I'm not sure how it says it. First John 3, verse 19. Uh, I'll read it from the King James. Oh, Passion says, we, yeah, let's do that. We know that the truth lives within us because, look at this, we demonstrate love in action, which will what? Reassure our hearts. Which will what? Reassure our hearts in his presence. I, I just believe that there's some reassuring that needs to be done in our hearts. Verse 20, I'll read it from the New King James and maybe we'll read it from the uh, Passion afterwards. It says, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater. He's greater than our heart and knows all things. But look at verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing <laughs> in his sight. This confidence, this confidence. Now, now even if your heart condemns you. Your heart may condemn you, but even God is greater than your heart. Yeah. But there is this thing of condemnation that if you can deal with it, if you can learn to deal with it, let it go, that if your heart doesn't condemn you, then it gives you this confidence. Well, if you know the love that God has towards you, it absolutely deals with that condemnation. Because it's not based upon the love that God has towards you. It's not based upon how good your character is, yeah. nor is it based upon what you do for him. Good character is great. We should have good character. We should be doing some stuff for him. Yes, praise the Lord. But his love for you is not based, is not dependent upon that. When Jesus was baptized, uh, this voice from heaven came and said, this is my son, my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He had not yet done a single miracle. I don't know about if he even preached anything. He hadn't stepped into what God had him to do as yet. He was finding himself in the word and all these different things, but he was positioning himself. But the voice came and said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And not one thing did he do for God to be pleased with him. But just because he came from him. And so, verse 20 in Passion says, whenever our hearts make us feel guilty and remind us of our failures, we know that God is much greater and more merciful than our conscience, and he knows everything there is to know about us. Verse 21, my delightfully loved friends. Do I have any delightfully loved friends in here? When our hearts don't condemn us, we have a bold freedom to speak face to face with God. And whatever we ask of him, we receive because we keep his commands. I love this. And by our beautiful intentions, we continue to do what brings pleasure to him. Didn't Jesus say, I always do those things that please my father? Is that available to us? Can we, is it possible that we can live this way? Is it, is it as hard as people make it seem? That we always do the things that please our father. Let's pray. I don't have a conclusion. This is my conclusion. We're just going to pray. But just think about that. I wonder how many different things. Is your heart hardened? Could there be some things that you've laid down? Could there be some things that God is just saying, hey, pick that back up again? That passion, that desire, the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lead us. I just want to read that again in, in James 1 in the Passion Translation, verse 26. If someone believes they have a relationship with God but fails to guard his words, <clears throat> to guard his words, then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty. Uh, there are some words, rhema words that were spoken this week and um, it would benefit us greatly if we see those words towards us. Um, not that I'm trying to get everybody to be selfish minded, but I think it's important to think about yourself right now. Think about the words that were spoken, um, the particular word, a rhema word that keeps coming back to my heart is the things that were of a ceiling point to, uh, will become a floor level. In other words, there's room for more. We're starting at the, at the stopping point of that last level. 
and we're starting so so let's grab a hold of that right now everybody stand up grab a hold of that yeah yeah thank you lord thank you lord you're making uh yeah the floor level the what what was once a ceiling level for us a floor level in this new rank in this new phase in this new come on agree with it agree with it you're making it for me those mantles are for me those mantles that you spoke of Lord much rain of word have been revealed and spoken and oh yeah my soul the new season the new day oh I'm stepping into I'm stepping into a new day a new day a new day a new day oh it is a new season for me it is a new day oh what was a ceiling level before is a floor level in this new season and in this new day oh my how long how long how long how long before we respond not long now 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 today today is the day today is the day today is the day I'll be releasing yeah your life that is in me your life that is in me not only do I acknowledge it not only am I fascinated by it but I'm responding the insights and revelations we receiving this week oh my son get day I'm on no today today is the day today is the day so I'm looking for it I'm looking for the opportunities I'm looking for the lackings I'm looking for that which is not aligned I'm also cool with your word and my next today both written and spoken and illuminated in my heart to make a monsegi reach the time so rosa party yet a baby should day and my cons again it a baby should day oh baby brush today yeah more deeply and deeply more deeply deeply aware deeply aware of you in us of your power power in us of your spirit the same spirit the same spirit the same spirit oh my summon negative not a lesser version not a lesser quality oh my common negative every day the spirit of life and the spirit of truth and the spirit of faith he lives in me he lives in me he lives in me oh a releasing at will a releasing of power at will a releasing of anointing at will a releasing of a life at will at will because I know because I know because of an awareness because of a, a deep deeply aware deep aware it is in me he is in me he is in me and I've been called as an heir not only an heir but a joint heir ha 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 and a co-laborer yeah 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 for it is the body that is to do the work in the earth it is the body and I'm a member of the body ha 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 I'm a member of the body and I'm also gay and therefore I get in my place I get in my place and I function as you have created as you have ordained as you have set in motion to make a boat a boat a baby should day yeah today's the day today's the day today is the day oh oh new beginnings new 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 ah make shade yeah new quest new quest in you 
Nu quest amanda bam ban jinga maso. Oh bamba le de bo risha mako zeke bo si. Hey, hey, yamano le de be brisha digging about support a be brisha day. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Mando red ding anzo go di jaman so de de. Hey, yeah, ma do ra ma mo shege bun sa mando lika maso de be brisha day. Oh, because, yeah, 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 that boldness comes as a result of being deeply aware. That confidence. Oh, the purpose of seeing and knowing is to do, is to respond, is to respond, is to respond. Also, only Eddie Bishop. It's not just to see and know. It's to respond. It's to respond and cooperate. Temelimon Mosa Gele in the Boshi, Edebe Brike, Edo Song Din Dan De Zong Gom Bonze, O Makamanashide. Also, respond and cooperate. 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 Hemelakaman Sugulaba, the Be Brake Shadiga, the Bonsa Bay. Ho, ha, hey, hey, man, zo, ze, ban, ze, lu, shang, Zoribe, he moli shai, he mambashi, he mande, ye, 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 Zo rebe brush de la ba de yebo runda ase mi she manso zeze zeze zede ezo zora manze kole jimalo oh karaba brabai oh kamasonde oh samasonde melabore 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 be brama mande de be braba ba de yebo ruta la maso karama braba ba de yebo bridge be. Esa male de bebreke, esa male de brekadashi, e ye moson de de bosamanan de de begi moso rebe brisha de. Oh, ha, he, ha, he, me, she, oh ye malakana maso de de brisha de. Oh, yeah, so I'll take my place, I'll take my place, I'll take my place. Oh, yeah, adamaso kore be brisha de, get about some more and get a mosone, e, 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 oh, 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 yeah, 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 for he surely has need of you, he surely has need of you. Oh, my common action, she must summon noon did he be brace today. Oh, ha, 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 ha. It is a new season and it surely is a new day. Hey, ha, 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 ha. Oh, make a maso re be banshi ga man su le be bo bon son de. Ha, ya, ha, ye. Oh, karaba braba badi ye de be breach a beta bor de le beats a man de be breaking them on osha po. Oh, re be brahma man she Case Akima no Sake. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord, for such as I have, for such as I have, for such as I have. I give, I give, I give, I give. Oh, hey, mo re de ge mo so te. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, you Father. Praise God. Praise Glory. God. Well, freely you've Thank received you, and freely give. And uh, as you were praying, I, I just, I, I heard this too again, just that whole angelic uh, thing that uh, guard your words because there are angels uh, and, and activities that need to be done. Uh, yes. And, and uh, guard your words because they're waiting. They're waiting on your words so they can go this way yes. and they can go that way. And so they can take care of things. And I, I think you did your hands like this too. I just, I just heard that. And, and there's, there's this manshtipele uh, kistomande. Activities in the realm. And, and, and they're there to, to minister for us. You know, and a lot of times they're just sitting waiting. Like, almost like, what am I doing here? Like, give me something to do. Give me something to do. Give me something to work with. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well.